Before the nuclear bomb, no weapon evoked so much passion and fear as the battleship. The battleship was in its day the biggest and most complicated moving artifact in existence. The battleship story is controversial. One of the largest and most expensive weapons ever built. It played a dramatic role in shaping the modern world. In the first global arms race, emperors, politicians and admirals all became intoxicated by the majesty and firepower of the floating fortress. They were considered to be a tool of world policy. It demonstrated the country's ability to act on a world stage. The Battleships is an epic saga of the quest for global supremacy that culminated in the titanic sea battles of the 20th century. History will look at the battleship and say, here was the most fiendish weapon that man could devise at the time. For as long as men have gone to sea, maritime nations have sought wealth and power beyond their borders. By the 18th century, Spain, France, Holland, Portugal and Britain had established vast colonial empires. And it was their grand sailing vessels of oak and canvas that became both vehicles for trade and the spearhead of security between colonies and home. In the era of sail, imperial jealousies were played out in dramatic confrontations at sea. The man of war, mounting row after row of deadly cannon, was the most devastating weapon of the age. The British method of fighting in those days whether you were a three-deck ship, a frigate, or a line of battleship of 74 guns, was to close with the enemy as soon as possible and then bring all your guns to bear on his hull and pour your broadsides into his hull. You cannot actually sink very well a wooden ship but what you can do by pounding the hull of the enemy is to destroy the morale of the people on board and it's the destruction of their morale that will bring about their defeat In political terms, he who ruled the oceans ruled the world. And for almost two centuries, that nation was Britain. The first permanent navy, and arguably the first battleships, were the creation of the ambitious English king, Henry VIII. His fighting ships, like the Mary Rose, were revolutionary vessels designed solely for war. Until that time, battles at sea were fought between merchant ships armed with guns. Well, I think it's fair to say that the Mary Rose is the first extant ship that was designed specifically for warfare on a large scale. So you can say she is an embryonic battleship, if you like. Well, whether the Mary Rose was built around guns or, or um, guns were built for the Mary Rose is actually a very, very difficult thing to analyze. Undoubtedly, the ship was designed for heavy guns, and without a doubt, this is the first series of ships that are designed specifically to take large guns on three decks. 
Her armaments were a mixture of muzzle or front-loading cannon, an early breech or rear-loading guns, a fairly unreliable weapon, but one that was to become the main armament of future battleships. Mary Rose and her sister ships were the foundation of a maritime dynasty that would influence world affairs for well over three centuries. Super weapons that became symbols of state for any self-respecting empire builder. I think all the vessels within Henry VIII's infant navy, if you like, were symbols of both the king's power and also the, the might of Britain as a, as a naval force. In the following 200 years, confrontations between rival empires saw the fighting ship evolve into the magnificent ship of the line. HMS Victory, with her three gun decks, was a typical first-rate line of battleship. A vessel capable of keeping the sea in any season, in any part of the world. Launched in 1765, she carried 27 miles of rigging, set four acres of canvas, and took six years to build. A forest of more than 2,000 oak trees was felled for her construction. Victory was over twice the length and seven times the tonnage of Mary Rose and represented a dynasty of sailing ships that had become truly perfected as weapons in themselves. The Victory, like all the other great sailing battleships of the period, like all battleships indeed, is a floating gun platform. Just look at that massive battery of guns that you see as you stand alongside her. 50 guns all pointing towards you. 32 pounders, 24 pounders, 12 pounders, all designed to deliver a shattering blow, a blow that could destroy a building within a few minutes with the power of it. She had a, a very heavy fire output. It's something like about half a ton of metal fired out on one broadside. She would have a very large crew, 820 to 850 men. And it must have been horrendous working in those conditions because the decks are relatively low. There is not much escape for smoke, not much escape from the damage that you receive either. In the defence of empire, Victory's grand arsenal was to become Britain's front line in the most dramatic sea battle ever fought under sail. In 1803, Victory became the flagship of Admiral Horatio Nelson. It was a time when the British feared invasion of their country from across the English Channel by Napoleon's troops. The French leader boasted, let us be masters of the Straits for six hours, and we shall be masters of the world. On October 9, 1805, Nelson invited his captains to dine with him on board Victory. He told them of his dramatic plan to end, once and for all, the so-called Great Terror posed by the combined French and Spanish fleets. He argued that the traditional manner of approaching the enemy in single file and engaging them at close range was outdated. Instead, they would sail in two columns, heading for the enemy line to break it up and cause a general melee. The tactic was a gamble. Trafalgar, the two fleets were in contact from dawn on the 21st. 
Uh, they were approaching a collision at approximately two knots. So the men on both sides had ample time to breakfast and lunch and change their clothes and think about what was about to happen. At the Battle of Trafalgar, Nelson's ships were by no means the largest or most heavily armed. But in the era of fighting sail, the means of waging war afloat was an art, not a science. It was commanders like Nelson who won battles, not ships. The interesting thing about Nelson's tactics at Trafalgar is that he put himself into a position which normally you would have tried to avoid. And the reason he did that was because he realised that the French and Spanish fundamentally couldn't shoot straight. Nelson's fleet of 27 men of war overcame the combined 33 ships of France and Spain in a matter of hours, clinching a decisive victory for Britain. But I think it was the crushing nature of the victory. It showed that the Royal Navy even could defeat a superior fleet in terms of numbers, that in fact uh, the Royal Navy could annihilate any equal, and it therefore sort of consecrated the image of the Royal Navy as the dominant fleet. Excitement in Britain at the news of the victory was tempered by mourning. A shot to the chest added Nelson to the list of 5,000 who perished on both sides. Such was the human cost of a battle that secured Britain's sovereignty of the oceans for at least another hundred years. <laughs> 